Well, good morning and welcome to morning prayer for October 14th, 2021, the Thursday after the 20th, Sunday after Pentecost, and the lesser feast of Samuel Isaac Joseph Sharashevsky, missionary and bishop in 1906. Let's take our, give ourselves just a moment to get ready for prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say the Venite together. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Let's say together the psalm for today, which is Psalm 18, part 1. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my stronghold, my crag, and my haven, my God, my rock, in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation, and my refuge. You are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me, and the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling. My cry of anguish came to his ears. The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountains shook. They reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He parted the heavens and came down with a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the seas were uncovered, and the foundations of the world laid bare. At your battle cry, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into an open place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Don't think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. People's enemies are members of their own households. Those who love father or mother more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who love son or daughter more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who don't pick up their crosses and follow me aren't worthy of me. Those who find their lives will lose them, and those who lose their lives because of me will find them. 
Those who receive you are rece also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones, because they are my disciples, will certainly be rewarded. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together the song of Judith. I will sing a new song to my God, for you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength, invincible. Let the whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came into being. You sent your breath and it formed them. No one is able to resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence, but to those who fear you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, can please you, but whoever fears the Lord shall stand in your sight forever. Well, beloved, today is the feast day of Samuel Isaac Joseph Sheroshevsky, bishop and missionary in 1906, so I'm going to read his citation from Lesser Feasts and Fast 2018. Joseph Sheroshevsky was born on May 6, 1831, of Jewish parents in the Lithuanian town of Taragan. His early education was directed towards the rabbinate, but during graduate studies in Germany, he became, inter became interested in Christianity, both through contacts with missionaries and through his own reading of a Hebrew translation of the New Testament. In 1854, Sharashevsky immigrated to America and entered the Western Theological Seminary in Pittsburgh to train for the ministry of the Presbyterian Church. After two years, he decided to become an Episcopalian and to finish his theological studies at the General Theological Seminary in New York City, from which he graduated in 1859. After ordination and in response to Bishop Boone's call for helpers in China, Sharashevsky left for Shanghai. Being a talented linguist, he learned to write Chinese during the voyage. From 1862 to 1875, he lived in Peking and translated the Bible and parts of the prayer book into Mandarin. Sharashevsky was elected Bishop of Shanghai in 1877 and was consecrated in Grace Church, New York City. He established St. John's University in Shanghai and began his translation of the Bible and other works into classical Chinese. After some years, however, he became seriously ill. Stricken with paralysis, he resigned his see in 1883. Sharashevsky was determined to continue his translation work, however, and after many difficulties in finding support, he was able to return to Shanghai in 1895. Two years later, he moved to Tokyo, where he died on October 15, 1906. With heroic perseverance, Sharashevsky completed his translation of the Bible, typing some 2,000 pages with the middle finger of his partially crippled hand. Four years before his death, he said, I have sat in this chair for over 20 years. It seemed very hard at first, but God knew best. He kept me for the work for which I am best fitted. He is buried in the Aoyama Cemetery in Tokyo, next to his wife, Susan Mary Waring, who supported him constantly during his labors and illness. Well, beloved, this story of uh, Sharashevsky is a, definitely an a, a, a inspiring story of devotion. Now, there are several uh, threads here that you can pick up that are, are threads that could go very deep and have some, some serious questions about culture and the way that Christianity is transmitted. Uh, the fact that he was born Jewish, uh, the Hebrew New Testament, all that kind of stuff brings up questions of, of our relationship with, uh, with Jews, especially in the 20th century. Uh, the question of missions into, into China and, and Southeast Asia bring up questions about the, the link to colonialism. Uh, and those are all great discussions uh, and important discussions. They're not anything I can get into the kind of depth that we would need to in this kind of a, uh, a format. Um, so what, are, what I'm going to concentrate today on with Sharashevsky is this time that he spends after he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed almost completely, except for, it depends on who you talk to, is one or two fingers of his right hand. Um, and he spent his entire life as a translator. I mean, he's obviously a, a polyglot, just an amazing linguist, because he's, uh, you know, by this time he's got uh, Hebrew and Yiddish and Polish and um, German and English and, you know, he, he, many, many languages and he moves to, to, to China and he starts to do this uh, translation work, uh, which, you know, in, by any measure is uh, translating the Bible into a new language is a, is a way to expand understanding and to spread the gospel. Um, 
so he, he learns uh, Mandarin, which is where he works most of his stuff, and then he also learns classical Chinese to, to start um, to try to move it into the intelligentsia of, of, of China. And he spends, you know, he ends up for 20 or 25 years with just these two fingers, basically all he can do, uh, ch typing on a typewriter uh, to, to work on this translation into Chinese. Um, and that's really an inspiring story because especially when we're looking at it from our culture. Uh, you know, American culture is, is very, very ableist. Uh, people talk about that and the fact that we're constantly talking about how somebody is useful or what is their, 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 their function in society. You know, one of the things that's a, actually a marker of American society is not true of everywhere else in the world is one of the first questions that you ask somebody when you meet them is, what do you do? And when you ask them that question, they immediately respond with what their career or their job is. Um, that's not true everywhere in the in the in the world. That's a, that's a particularly American um, obsession, and that's because we are kind of obsessed with our usefulness, with what we do, with what we produce, um, all of that kind of stuff. And by that measure, you know, if you look at the beginning of this 25 years, I can't imagine, you know, people, especially those of us as modern Americans, looking at this and saying, "Oh my gosh." this man is going to be, quote, useful, <laughs> uh, with, with two fingers available on his right hand. But yet, over 25 years, he produces a lot of translation that is still the basis for, for translations of, of Ch Chinese Bibles today. This is a really important thing that he does over 20, 25 years with just two fingers and a typewriter. And this, should, this kind of thing should challenge all of our ideas about usefulness, about ability. You know. Um, we've just spent a year and a half, most of us, um, sequestered to some degree or another, you know, and one of the questions is, gosh, what am I useful for? You know, the, the panic in the culture of we can't go to the workplace. So what are we for if we're not here for going to the workplace? You know, going back to the example of Sharashevsky, maybe there is something that we are intended to do that is not what we thought we were intended to do. Maybe there's something we're intended to do that is not something that society would expect us to do. Maybe we are meant for something different. Maybe God is calling us to something that is different than what the culture might tell us. Um, and if we're being told that we're useless, if we're being told that there's nothing that we can do that's useful, Sharashevsky's Cher example is that God can find a use for all of us. Uh, and it may not be a use that, 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 that produces something immediately, but it could be something that produces over something over our long term that's incredibly important. Uh, the other place that this needs to challenge us is even in our prayer forms, you know, a lot of discussion uh, in our liturgical stuff in, in the Episcopal Church right now has been about around our prayers for the sick uh, in, in the prayer book. Uh, a lot of them are very what, what you would call ableist. They're basically saying, um, Lord, we thank you for the healing that's begun. May the healing uh, continue so that, in some cases, it even says, so that they may be restored to usefulness. Uh, that's a term that I, I quite often leave out of those prayers right now, just because uh, in, in a lot of cases, restoring them back to where they were before may not be a possibility. And second, the idea that they're not useful because they're not performing the tax, tasks they were doing before is uh, certainly not a gospel imperative. It's certainly nothing we see uh, reflected in the example of Sharashevsky. So we are all useful. By, base, by the basis of who we are, we are useful to God. By the basis of who we are, we're called to various tasks. Maybe that task is just prayer. Maybe that task is just writing thank you notes. Maybe that task is, um, is, is being politically active by writing senators. You know, um, one example of um, when I was uh, in seminary, um, I was, my job during part of seminary was downloading uh, things off of an old computer uh, into an archive for the uh, for the library. This was a, a famous um, uh, scholar who had um, created an awful lot of stuff. Part of the prayer book uh, belongs uh, was was done by him. Um, and as I went through his notes on these old MS DOS files, the thing that amazed me the most uh, he was a known orator. Yeah, all of these wonderful things that he was known for. But the thing that amazed me were the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of notes for Amnesty International. And this was before the internet, so he was sending letters to places all over the world at the rate of about one or two a day. This was the thing that he did. So 
even though, yes, he was useful in the fact that he was teaching seminary and he was useful in the fact that he was um, a great preacher, he was also doing this incredible work where he, um, where he was uh, speaking up for some of those in the world who were, had the least amount of power, and that always had a long impression on me. So the example of Sharashevsky tells us that we should never underestimate the usefulness that we have to God just because of some human construct that we have in, in our heads. Amen. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, who in your providence called Joseph Sharashevsky to the ministry of this church and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to translate the Holy Scriptures, inspire us by his example and prayers to commit our talents to your service, confident that you uphold those whom you call, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. I bid your prayers for all those on our parish prayer list, especially remembering the souls of Barbara Highway and Linda Sires. I bid your prayers for all those who are suffering from COVID, for all those who are healthcare workers or other essential workers. We pray for the strength to take the actions we need to to ameliorate this pandemic. I ask for your prayers for the people of the Holy Land and continuing prayers for the people of Afghanistan. I bid your private prayers this time. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining uh, in this community of prayer this morning, whether you're doing it live, whether you're doing it online by video or uh, through our podcast. Um, thank you for joining us and uh, joining in praying for the world. Remember that you are always useful to God, uh, that you are beloved. And um, until I see you again, take care and God bless.